It's amazing to think that my whole life, I've been three days away from dying. How little I might care until it's gone. Water. Where we came from, what we are made of, the fuel, the essence of life as we know it. Within days of its absence, our bodies would die, and it has shaped our entire planet. Yet it's so easy to take for granted. It wasn't until I connected to it in a different way that it all made sense. I had to find a way to be on the river. My passion for paddling was the light on my path I could not ignore. And despite my fears, I had to change. But how, when, where, and with who? And of course, as with all great mysteries, why? I quit my job and made a plan to paddle 34 major water trails in Minnesota over the course of two years. Approximately 4,300 miles of river. But why? I still didn't understand why I was doing this. And then I realized, we never care about a thing we do not touch ourselves. How can we appreciate and protect something so precious and vulnerable if we do not take time to grasp its complexities? It's easy to assume this resource is infinite and indestructible, that it will always flow through our lives, bountiful and clean, nourishing our bodies and healing our spirit. Feel like going around this, and uh, perhaps you can see why I'm out here. My time on the river has only begun to unveil the imminent dangers right before us that are so easy to ignore. From the fertilizer and runoff that deposits excess phosphorus and nitrogen, causing the algae to grow and depleting oxygen levels, to the invasive species that steal nutrients and disrupt natural functions and the erosion and sedimentation that suffocates and alters the ecosystems. What appears to be safe and balanced on the surface is often unsettled underneath. But maybe what's most surprising has been the solitude. Where is everyone? Why are they not here? For days and days I've been on the river, paddling near towns, through communities, and across the state. I've hardly seen anyone. Some would say that's a blessing, but how can they care if they don't realize this exists? It's here, in between my solitude and need for connection, where I realized this journey is so much bigger than me, and I found my purpose, to reconnect humanity with one of the most basic and simple elements vital to our lives and this planet, water. It's been rewarding to share this journey and see the spark in someone's eyes as we discuss the rivers, what they mean, and why they're important. It is day two, 7.45 a.m. I'm gonna get where I get, nine miles of 153. I lost a little time, I'm at like 600 miles. My hope is this experience will ripple through these communities and ignite a change beyond what I will ever fully understand or know. It's been gratifying to work with the DNR documenting what I find along the way, building databases of useful information that will hopefully serve them for many years to come. This video is for Eric and Nathan at the DNR. And it hasn't been so bad, paddling thousands of miles in the rain and heat, over dead fallen dams, through the muck and brush, before sunrises, behind sunsets, with friends and without. It's been a joy to swim in the fresh, cool water and breathe in the landscape. Water is in our blood, it's in our homes, it's in the sky and beneath our bones. Who are we if we do nothing? 
Who are we still if we remain sleeping to the changes around us and within us? Find your river, whether it's in your backyard or across the globe. It's an excuse for an adventure to discover, to glow among the stars and pick out shapes in the clouds. But more importantly, look under the surface, feel what is around you, see how it changes you, notice more. Water is everywhere and how we interact matters because in the stillness of the morning, when the sun patiently rises over the horizon, you can look out into the world and you will see only yourself, smiling and connected to it all.